being gone Is I can watch the game all day long And I can stretch my legs out in the bed Extra pillow underneath my head I Don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside of lonely I got a lot more room for my stuff And I only have to wash one cup I can stay up late and play my guitar And the groceries go twice as far I don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside lonely Your girlfriends ain't ringing the phone off the wall I never have to hear from that mother-in-law Ain't cut the grass since the middle of June I smoke a big cigar up in my living room Don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside lonely Trash pile up right by the door Eat pizza and ice cream three times a day Cause I ain't worried about watching my way I don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside of lonely Yeah man, just think about all the good things about you being gone Stretch out out here at home. Hey man, come on in. Don't mind the muddy shoes on the white carpet. She ain't here. You hungry? Hey man, I got some food if you want to eat. I got a microwave oven with little pictures on the front of it. You just pick what you want to eat and push the button, and it will cook it for you. Yeah, man, you can smoke that cigar up here in the kitchen. Just use that vase over there. Need something to drink? We got beer, bourbon, whiskey, scotch, Diet Coke, Fanta. Yeah, man, I bet you've been on the road for a minute. The bathroom's right down the hall. Switches on the left, doors on the right. Just remember to leave the lid up. Leave it up. Hey everybody, welcome to Facebook Live Wednesday night. And tonight, hopefully it's no exception. I'm your host, Brian Nova, and uh, we got a great show for you tonight. There's a song uh, from my latest CD, which is called The Brian Nova Collective, and uh, the, the name of the CD itself, and of course, is called... I forgot the name of my CD. Uh, there it is, The Upside of Lonely. Thank you very much. And here's a song from The Upside of Lonely. J 
just you, just me. Let's find a cozy spot to cuddle and woo. Just you, just we. I've missed an awful lot. My trouble is you. Oh, gee, what are your charms for? What are my arms for? Use your imagination. Just you, just me. I'll tie a lover's knot around wonderful you. Spot to cuddle and woo. Just us, mm, just we. I've missed an awful lot. My trouble is you. Whoa, gee, what are your charms for? What are my arms for? Use your imagination. Just you, mm, just me. I'll tie a lover's knot. I've missed an awful lot. I'll tie a lover's knot. Round wonderful you. Woo! Just you, just me. Yeah, or better known as just me, just me. One of my favorite songs. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well this week. Uh, all sorts of news out there. First and foremost. Uh, we want to give a big shout out to all our friends up in the Napa and Sonoma Valley. Uh, they have been going through absolute turmoil up there with the uh, glass fire. The good news is that many of our dear friends, such as uh, Ted Laddie and Chris Hall up at Long Meadow Ranch are safe. Our pals Camp and uh, his wife over at, uh, at Lark Mead are safe. We also have some friends... Uh, the Gambles, it sounds like their winery is okay. We're still listening in on some other friends of ours like Dave Miner's Winery and some other folks, of friends of ours up there. So we are hoping everybody is safe and okay and uh, we will get through all of this, I can assure you. Also want a uh, big shout out. This is a big week for uh, myself personally because the very first weekend of October, 
uh, three of my favorite people have a birthday. So on Monday, it was my dear pal, Steve Miller. The eagle himself has landed and turned 77. Steve, and happy birthday on Monday. Uh, yesterday was my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom, yesterday. Uh, and uh, today is my dear pal Bobby Vickers' birthday. And uh, Bobby's not telling anybody how old he is, but whatever he's doing, keep on doing it, Bobby. He's on a cross-country little tour, and uh, we wish him the best. Uh, also, uh, on the sad side of news, uh, I can't believe how many great musicians we have lost just in the last few days. I mean, uh, of course, everybody's probably heard last night that... Uh, uh, one of the legends of guitar, Eddie Van Halen, has left us for the big gig in the sky. He will certainly be missed, as well as uh, Johnny Nash, uh, one, of, uh, one of my songs of my youth. I can clear, see clearly now. I wish I could talk clearly, but I can see clearly now, the great Johnny Nash. Uh, we've also lost uh, another legendary musician, singer, songwriter, and actor, Mac Davis, this week. And Helen Reddy, and of course our own our own Trini Lopez here in the desert. And uh, earlier in the season, of course, early in the COVID season, uh, took the great little Richard from us. So uh, thoughts out to all those um, and their families, and uh, hopefully we keep their music alive here on the show and other places. Also, please check out our PayPal right here. Uh, if you're feeling generous, please send us. It's never expected, but it's always appreciated. PayPal uh, at paypal.me Brian Nova Music. And over on the other side, of course, check out our YouTube channel because uh, we will be going live to YouTube here in the very, very, very near future. We're working on those things right now as we speak, folks. So uh, make sure you subscribe to YouTube. And uh, I think that's all the commercials I have for right now. So I am going to play one more song for you. The shadow of your smile when you have gone will color all my dreams and light the dawn. Look into my eyes, my love, and see all the little joy. Wistful little star, it was far too high. 
a teardrop kissed your lips and so did I now when I remember spring of all, 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 all the joys that love can bring I will be remembering the shadow of your smile songs the shadow of your smile hey and i was looking at some uh some of our uh notes coming by and of course our dear pal wonderful uh drummer leo vigil reminded me of the great franco rocco Pristoria just died uh the lead bassist for tower power and uh man uh, i know growing up playing bass myself uh he was he was a hero to all of us and he will be sorely sorely missed uh, great Rocco. Also, uh, big hi out there to Ann Marge and of course Tom Farnham. Good to see you uh, up and about, up and about, out and about, as they say in Canada. And uh, feeling better, brother. Glad you're healing up. And Ron Rogers, we want to say hi to everybody out there at the Chug Trail Room. Uh, big boss, get yourself a blue blazer. That's all I can say. 
And uh, of course, uh, everyone over at the Vertigo Club too as well. Hope you guys are doing well. And uh, there we go, there we have it. So we are now. <laughs> favorite songs right there the great day by day all right folks uh i forgot to mention our uh bird of the day here is this lovely lovely uh find it like that uh illusion and it is uh the cigars pride uh is muy bueno i can't wait to write the light this sucker up a little bit later all right, folks. Well, listen, I want to get on to our very special guest today because he is very special indeed. Um, I'm thinking of him as one of the great, great, great organ players on the planet. Uh, his uh, Jim Pugh's performing music career spans over 40 years and includes multiple Grammy Award, Platinum, and Gold records. He's recorded and performed with some of the greatest musicians out there, including the great B.B. King, Etta James, Johnny Lee Hooker, and he spent many, many decades on the road with the great Robert Cray. Also toured with guys like Boz Skaggs and Van Morrison, just for, just for openers. And uh, he has also founded his own foundation called the Little Village Foundation, we're gonna get talking about, but it's a really, really amazing thing that he's doing with this foundation. And I certainly wanna get into more of that in just a minute. So, but first I wanna bring onto the screen here, my pal, the great Jim Pugh. Jim, there you are. Wow, it's a pleasure to be here. This is exciting. Oh man, it's good to have you here. I'm digging it. I'm digging the coat. I want the coat. Dude, Don't I you like your red coat, shirt, dude. man. We should do a swap. Oh, I, I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be in the same kind of uh, intensity category as yourself. No. That's, you're I jamming over there, good. You're, you're working your primary colors. That's good to see. 
Good to see you. So thank you very much. <laughs> but I'm pumped. Hey, so listen, I want to ask you a couple questions. Sure. First and foremost, where did you get your start? What, what got you? How did you end up on the B3? How did you end up being one of the great B3 players on the planet? Uh, no, well, Before like a lot of people, I started out um, piano. I really came, I grew up in suburban Chicago, and I came from, at a really um, early age, I think, came to uh, listening to Chicago blues and was mm. really interested in, in attempting to uh, play like Otis Pan. And, you know, I was listening yeah. to B.B. King and seeing Muddy Waters. And so it came to it through that. And then at some point, I... Um, Oh, it's all through the whole story. I came out to California and I actually, two things happened. One, I started playing Mexican music, polka music, uh, Little Joe and La Familia for those people. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I was in a band that did played kind of a copy. That was like 16, 17. And also I saw Chester Thompson play with Tower Power. And those yeah. two things made me want to be an organ player. So I switched at that point. I played both for years in bands, but um, and I and over the years, it's interesting. Over the years, I pretty much play um, kind of uh, if there's a B, if there's a piano player and a B three player, if there's a piano and a B three in a recording session, I usually play the B three and the other guy plays the piano. And there's very few circumstances where I play because most of those keyboard players. In blues and in rock and roll, we play both. But for the most part, I, if there's a B3 and a piano, and there's a B3 and a piano player, and I'm the one of them, I'll play the B3. With that, James, the keyboard player played with Dave Matthews for years. He um, plays with Santana now. He, When he and I played together with that, James, I played B3 and he played piano. When Mike Finnegan played and I played together with Etta, I would play... Um, piano and he would play either so th that's what it sort of evolved into um and that's pretty much it i've enjoyed a really great uh, career and the plus the coolest guys in the world play organ i mean you work I with agree. the great smith i don't need to tell you so well i've also had the chance to work with the great jim Pugh, man i tell you that i've oh, come yeah. full circle speaking of working with the great jim Pugh, uh uh we've got a couple of videos here folks that we'd like to show you uh oh. I didn't know about this. Yes, I know. This is brand. I'm springing this on you right now. Oh, man. What are you talking yeah. about here? Yeah. Um, normally, I would ask my guests to set these up, but I'm going to set this one up for him here. This is a, a tune that I'm sure he must have played countless times with Robert Cray. Am I correct in this? We're going to do Two no. Steps from the End. Yes, Two, two Steps from the End. That's right. I Oh, that's what we're doing now. Okay, I know where you're going. Yes, it was a song I wrote, and I enjoy playing it instrumentally. It's both can be played as an instrumental, and there's an um, an accompanying vocal to it that I didn't attempt today. We're just playing the music, and it's got a nice head to it. So, uh, dude, I didn't know you wrote this tune. Yeah, that's what I did. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Well, here is Jim Pugh's own a composition called Two Steps from the End." Check it out. <laughs>
All right. Boy, that was uh that was something, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jim, talk to talk to me a little bit. So you came from Chicago, kind of worked your way. You ended up being the only guy in the room that wanted to play B3. Uh who was uh who who were some of your favorite people to be to, to, to play behind? I mean, I know you've played you backed up everybody from BB King and Etta James, Johnny Lee Hooker, and of course. You spent many years in the row, row with Robert Cray. What was that like? Oh, good. Cray is phenomenal. I mean, he's one of the few people that can sing and play and write great songs. I mean, he really can. He's a, he's a phenomenal talent and a real nice guy. I don't think in 25 years of working with him, he really ever told me what to do. So we did a lot of stuff together. Um, I produced records for him wrote songs he'd play anytime you work with somebody they'll do your material that's pretty cool that is um, really cool i was really really lucky i did it probably about um 10 years too long but it was just such a great gig it was hard to walk away from you know it, but it's hard to grown men shouldn't be around each other that much <laughs> really yeah, yeah. nuts you know it's like six or eight months a year on the road but I raised a family and, you know, I did all kinds of great stuff. So it, it was, uh, it all ended up, he lives actually right by me here in, in uh, Santa Inez. Oh, uh, is that right? Yeah, he lives like a mile away. He uh, came up here one Friday and him and his wife and his kid, they looked around and they just said, that's it. And they moved here. So it's real nice. That is very cool. I remember Robert when I was growing up. Uh, I grew up in Seattle. Of course, he was a Tacoma boy, but sure. he would come up to Seattle and play the Rainbow and uh, all the different yeah. blues clubs. You've probably played the Rainbow Tavern over the years. I think I played the Rainbow with Etta. Actually, oh, no that was kidding. Her resurgence. Um, wow. Yeah, no, I played in Seattle a lot. Played there a lot with Cray, um, with Chris Isaac, and a, a bunch of people um, over the years. It's I have really. It's, I played in Palm Springs, man. Come on, man. Pal Joey's. I played everywhere. I'm an old dude. Man. You have. If you played Pal Joey's in Palm Springs, you you've been there and back. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, I, is there an axis of people that play that go between? Are you the only musician in Palm Springs from Seattle, or? Is, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! You know a lot of guys There's a ton. There. In fact, I remember. Um, I probably the first of a during a generation you know the, there was a period where there wasn't so many and i came down and a bunch of players another good b3 player barney mcclure i don't know if you know barney a piano player b3 player he moved down here and uh, larry holloway fantastic bassist moved down here and then a singer trish hatley had moved down here and i remember walking into this club and it was like all these seattle musicians at this oh, yeah. indian wells club and i thought oh my god i'm back in seattle again so there's quite a few, quite a few great musicians that, you know, it's a Seattle, the great gets to you, you got to get out of there. Yeah, that's what I always said about Chicago. Chicago's nice. I mean, nothing against Chicago, but I always felt like Chicago is a nice place to be from. Um, you know, and probably a great place to visit. But Everybody in California seems to be from Chicago or to yeah. Michigan. There's a lot of people from Michigan. Yeah, Michigan, Ohio, a lot West, of folks. West Belt. Santa Barbara County, full. Of, it's amazing. Everything is like, there's a real, I won't tell you which one. There's a real fancy, real high end, organic, groovy winery that's in Santa Barbara County that's owned by this woman that's the heir to Schlitz beer, which I always thought was kind of funny because Schlitz was sort of swell. But mm -hmm. always, yeah, <laughs> I think she keeps that on the down low. Yeah, I bet she does. I bet she does. <laughs> Hey, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, about the Little Village Foundation that you started sure. many years ago, and uh, we've got a little picture of it here, the Little Village. Nice. And um, tell tell our folks what that's all about. Um, little Village Foundation is a nonprofit. It's a five hundred one c three nonprofit record company, and basically the idea is to shine the light of awareness on musicians who might not otherwise be heard. Um, and I found that, and there's, this is all sort of speak, but there's actual sort of evidence that I have in my career that this kind of thing works. Because what I found is, is that, you know, a life full of diverse music, which you have, and we as musicians, 
all lead this kind of lives of playing all different kinds of music in all different kinds of situations. That a you know, life filled with that really builds empathy and it makes for stronger communities in a better world. And that's kind of like the elevator pitch. But really it is, I found um, playing music early on that, and sometimes really sort of having to figure out how to make it work, whether I was playing in African dance classes, playing solo piano, or, you know, um, playing in, in Mexican weddings and quinceañeras and, and a lot of different circumstances that there's a real commonality of emotion. And so I've gone about um, starting this record company. We've done it for now six years. It's almost 40 releases. We've had artists, we've been reviewed and everything from Forbes to recently the Wall Street Journal, um, CNN, you know, and it really is just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a glorified saloon piano player that's uh, sort of started out with this idea that kind of there's a bunch of people that are signed on or they've kind of come along and supported me in doing this. And uh, I've been really, really lucky because I'm having a lot of fun and it's doing a lot of good on a lot of different levels for people. Small. I like to help people a little bit. You know, I don't know how to make not making people into rock stars, but I'm helping people's careers just a little bit. Or people who want to use music as a means of being able to go to college for young people um, or improve their living circumstance. And and there's been really, it's, it's been fun. So oh, that's bet. kind of... It's amazing stuff. Hey, I want to play another video that we did. Uh, this tune oh, is, uh, What Kind of Man Is This? And uh, you be the judge. Um, again, with um, Jim playing his Hammond B3. And of course, we have the ubiquitous Terry Miller on the bass. Ubiquitous. Uh, ubiquitous. And uh, the, uh, Andy Fraga Jr. on the drums. And of course, yours truly on guitar. And wow. uh, check out Jim playing What Kind of Man Is This? Check it out.
Wow. Wow. What about that, huh? That's, huh? Uh, that, that's, that's, a, about. that's a groovy little beat for the kids to tap their feet to, don't you think? Yeah. Hey, tell me about, I was uh, checking up on a story about you that in the same day you played on American Bandstand, and then same day, same night, you played in Oakland somewhere. How did that work out? I um, I was in a band in the, uh, I was like 22, 76, 77, 76. I played on American Bandstand, this band was in called Rubicon. And it was um, Jerry Martin from Sly and the Family Stone and a couple of people from Cold Blood. And um, and afterwards, everybody went to the um, Rainbow. <laughs> and I flew home and I flew home and I went and played because I said, oh, no, I got a gig. And they go, what do you mean you got a gig? I go, well, yeah, I'm going to go play at the Safari Room in East Oakland. And they went, What? This is a big deal, you know. I had like a top forty record, and I was in a band with a top forty record. And I don't think I would obviously do that now. But at the time, it was really the kind of thing that I didn't place a whole lot of difference um, between gigs. I mean, I, I have learned really early that um, gigs where you have a lot of expectation usually tend to not be that great. Exactly. Um, or like playing for presidents. I mean, it sounds cool, but, you know, I didn't, I've never had much success. Um, that doesn't mean that much to me. Um, but playing in a storefront church or playing at the corner bar in Omaha on a Tuesday, you know, you, you never know when the muse is going to show up and something cool is going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And that, yeah. like how that was. I just kind of, I would start playing and I would just, any chance, I didn't care if it was American Bandstand or at the corner bar. It was just something to do, you know. I'm sure it's the same thing for you, Brian. You know, maybe not that silly, but oh no, maybe. it's uh pretty much pretty much the same. I mean, I had a, oh. I remember one time I was up at uh, uh, we were talking about his birthday earlier. Steve Miller, he has a recording studio up in Sun Valley. We we're up recording, and I had like this gig on Friday night. And, you know, he's like, oh, we'll just cancel gig, stay here. We'll, we'll hang out and smoke cigars and play and stuff. And I'm like, no, dude, I got this gig. You know, I got to go. And it was a crappy, you know, local gig that probably paid right. 100 bucks. But uh, uh, as much as I love Steve and love being there, I mean, I, I just felt like I needed to go play this gig. <laughs> well, I think that, that, you know, that's keeping it, you know, you're, you're keeping it straight by doing that, you know. Did you play the night that, well, I... I'm trying to think if we played together before um, or when we first played together anyway. Uh, there was something I was going to ask you and I forgot. I'm completely, I'm drawing a blank. It's just dead space. Can you cut this out? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why they call it Facebook Live. Hey, listen, so what kind yeah. of projects do you have coming up? What are you working on now with the, either got, yourself or I've with Little Village? probably a half a dozen things that I'm doing. Um, we just had a Little Village artist, the Sons of the Soul Revivers, played last weekend uh, the virtual um, uh, Hardly Strictly Bluegrass, and that oh, was yeah. kind of a big deal. I'm doing um, right now, I've got it. This is the kind of things I'm confronted with these days, and they're not real musical situations like playing. But I just recorded um, 20 singers, songwriters, 20 songs, one of them, David Jackson, um, ah. a whole range of singer songwriters and some of them to lesser degree and some of them to more degree, older, younger, every kind of gender identity, every kind of whatever you can imagine. I recorded 20 of these people and um, we're doing a, a CD release. We're going to do a stream it. Um, right around Thanksgiving. And the part of the deal is, is that each with Little Village, typically the artist gets a thousand CDs for free and they don't have to pay for anything. They don't own and owe anything. I, I, there's a lot of aspects I didn't explain about Little Village, but it's a great deal for musicians. Um, but in this case, it was 20 singer songwriters. Each one gets a hundred CDs that they're welcome to do with it ever. We do an ad campaign. Um, I've got the publicist for the Grateful Dead, Dennis McNally, and uh, we do a huge uh, PR campaign. We do uh, as well as um, all streaming, all streams and downloads, because it'll be at, at all 
uh, the various platforms like iTunes and Spotify, all the money from that, because it could be an accounting nightmare, all the money from that goes directly to um, an, or a nonprofit called Zoo Labs, which is a music accelerator platform. And if you know what that is, please call and let me know. I didn't, there's a bunch of people who worked on this together. So I'm learning a lot. Um, that's yeah. one project. I've got a soul singer, a new soul singer that I found who's 79 years old. No, that's new uh, from uh, Watts, actually, um, who sounds just like Johnny Taylor in 1969. It's an incredible singer, like wow. Bobby Wine. Um, and we did a record with him. And um, and that's it for, oh, no. And then there, there was a compilation. Um, I did a series this summer, um, a 10-part video, mini video, like a 10-minute video series with different art, 10 different artists called Working From Home. It was all done with an iPhone. Everybody shot themselves singing and playing a song. Um, and I had, oh, a couple, an accordion player from San Antonio, um, um, uh, Wilson Savoy, the uh, Cajun family from the, from Lafayette, they did oh, something. Yeah. And then uh, the Sons of the Soul revived. Anyway, we're making that into a compilation video that we're going to do. So I've got a couple different videos that I'm and I'm doing a video for twenty by twenty, and that's all going to be between now and Thanksgiving. So, whoo, busy man. Uh, yeah, Jim, I cannot and, thank you enough for coming out here and spending some time with us and sharing some of your music my pleasure it was really <laughs> cool and it's easy i in the friendly confines of my own house i don't have to go anywhere I that's it. right you can stay sequestered all night long and chat with us all night long yeah. jimmy thanks man i can't wait for us to play some more music together absolutely and, uh, you guys stay safe up there in santa Inez. all right man you stay safe in palm springs we'll do i must talk to you guys later all right see you later Ah, the great Jim Pugh. What a treat. What a treat. And yes, a uh, big thank you out to the wonderful Masoni here who's been helping us keep our show together with all sorts of new uh, technology that we're working with right now. Uh, also, big thank you, of course, to Jim Pugh. Big thanks out there to Andy Franca Jr. on the drums and, of course, Terry Miller on the bass. Thank you guys each week for knocking out these tunes. We really love it. Uh, we are going to cut our show just a little bit short tonight because I know a lot of you want to get to uh, sit and listen to what's going on on the TV right now. And um, yeah, like that. If you're not, uh, we are going to also uh, tell you about uh, Larry Dunlap's Cave. He goes live on, at 7 p.m. on Facebook as well. Our pal Larry Dunlap does his cave show. So uh, make sure you go over there and tell him we all said hi. And uh other than that, folks, I think uh, we have one more video to show you here. I'm going to play you one video. We've got a really nice one here uh, of, uh, <clears throat> since it's the end of the summer, start of the fall here in the desert. We're still around in the triple digits here, but we're hoping to get underneath that. We're hoping to get under 106 or 108 here the next day or so. So for us, it's the end of summer when we get under triple digits. And here's a song about uh, kind of the end of summer. It's called I'll Remember You, written by the great Cooey Lee, and it features myself, Terry Miller on the bass, and Andy Fragging on the drums. Give it a listen. Turn. 
Anyway, thank you guys for joining us tonight, and uh, we hope you have a great weekend. Uh, big shout out there to Annie Marge and Brett and everybody else that tuned in. John Connors, are you really John Connors? Thank you for tuning in and checking us out. Ellington says hi, and remember, keep it swinging out there, folks. Keep it swinging. <laughs>